Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Elementary OS 7. So let's begin. I, for one, am super excited to see Elementary 7. I didn't even expect this to be coming so soon because it took so long for 6 to come out. I thought it was going to be a lot longer before 7 will come out. So I'm pretty excited to check this out. But I got to say, through the making of this video, uh, this operating system is buggy. And I'm going to show you all the bugs that I found and all the stuff. It got to a point where technically I couldn't even finish filming this video. So you're going to be seeing all that. Anyway, let's begin. All right, so here's the installation process of me wiping out Linux Mint and installing Elementary OS 7. The installation process was super easy. I think a matter of like six clicks or seven got me all the way to the end to get the operating system completely installed. On first boot, it will ask you for the username and password, and that's when you are able to start using it like a normal desktop. Total install time took about three minutes to four minutes on this operating system, so it was super quick to install. So this is a fresh boot, okay? Before I do anything to it, I kind of want to show you the specs and stats before I start loading it in with graphic drivers and all the other stuff that I want to do. So in the App Center itself, uh, there are updates. One thing that I did notice is that if I hit update on this runtime update, it literally doesn't do anything. Um, it will install like that, give it two seconds, and then it kind of like comes back with an error. Well, not an error, but it comes back with updates. You could do this all day, and they'll still have this problem. Same goes with the drivers. I wasn't able to get the drivers to install through their uh, app center. So if I was to hit NVIDIA 2525, right? I'm going to hit free. It's going to install. Getting updates. I could even click onto it, and it'll even say uninstall. Like, it just won't do the installation process. It'll look like it does, because I can't click on it anymore. But as soon as I close this out, and go back into it again it's still there it's not going to let me install 525 so i don't know if it's a problem with the operating system or is it a problem with um the app center not exactly too sure but those are the problems i'm already facing and this is a fresh boot i did install one program which is extremely small just to show you guys the stats it's called usage uh, on a fresh boot, it's using about 1.4 gigs of RAM. And if I go over to storage, it's about 8.9 or 9 gigs worth of uh, storage. So on a fresh install, nothing installed, like nothing downloaded. Other than what I just tried to do, which I don't think it did anything. Even if it did, it, it would just change that by 500 megabytes. So 8.5 gigs fresh install or something. But otherwise, um, that's it for now. Now I'm going to load this up with the drivers, figure out how to install it, uh, get a few other things working, and then we'll re come back to this and review the desktop. Okay, so I managed to install the drivers. I had to manually do it through the terminal, which I was hoping I wasn't going to need because we got to a point where I was using Linux Mint and I didn't have to use the terminal at all to get anything installed. But yeah, I got the NVIDIA drivers installed, which is good. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. SMI. Yeah, perfect. But here's the problem I have, I'm running into now. Say so I go into the app center, and that update is gone for some reason. Or I might come back, I don't know yet. But, uh, yeah, see runtime update, still there. If I go home, and say I go to development, works perfectly fine. I can go in here, download whatever apps I need, go back home, and, but if I go to something else, say like system, closes out. And I actually need some system tools, and it's not working at all. Uh, same thing if I was to go, like, it's not even a matter of like going to whatever first. I could close this out completely, go into system settings, oops, not system settings, go back into the app center, and pop into system again. There you go, this closes out. I'm telling you, I just got this ISO image and it's as fresh as it can be. I even updated it just to make sure it's on the latest packages, but... Uh, I'm running into bugs, so that's a little bit of a bummer because I need system tools and I wanted to show you how the flat pack works. The system is still pretty buggy uh, for being its first release and I'm just stumbling across this by trying to install normal things. So take that into consideration if you are going to use this and I really really wanted this operating system to be perfect. like. 
I really like Elementary OS. I started using them since 2018. Their operating system was very stable. Um, I kind of glazed over 6, Elementary 6, and kind of jumped. I was excited when this came out. But just these bugs alone, um, it's already stopping me from wanting to use this. I'm trying to be as nice as possible, but those are, you know, bugs that will break stuff. Also, the browser seems to load extremely slow. You see this? It just goes into this um, OS 7 release. I was going to look at the updates that they have and kind of go down the list and compare them to what I know because I don't have much time playing around with this operating system. But in the meantime, look, this is not loading at all. Something's going on and I don't know if a re this is a fresh reboot. So if I was to show you uptime, I think I have 10 minutes on this. Uptime. I have nine minutes on this, so I just rebooted this just to make sure that everything's working and browser's not working. Okay, I did not intend this video to be this buggy. I wanted to go through some of the settings, which I already know off the top of my head, where now you can actually turn sites into web applications, which is a really nifty thing, but that's broken. All right, I'm gonna close out of that. Uh, I do really like the modes that you can change to, so the wallpapers, obviously, it's, it's the standard ones that you get from before. I really like this one, but I also like this new one. Um, the appearance now, you can go into dark mode, which is very clean, and they fixed up a lot of the dialog boxes that we had an issue with on 6, where it was not going into dark mode, but it is uh, repaired now. You also have accent colors, so if you don't like the blue that it comes shipped with, you could use other colors that you want, or your own custom color. Your text, you could actually change to like bigger or smaller, uh, depending on what you want, which helps with, I think you would say, scalability because there is no fractional scaling. And if you kind of need to get away with reading bigger font or making the title bar a little bit bigger, this kind of helps with that fractional scaling portion. Uh, then you have dock panel and you can change the icon size to big, small, depending on how you like to use it. And then you have your multitasking on each corner to do certain things. Like if you move your mouse to the top left, it could do a specific uh, function like multitask view. I'll go like that and it'll bring me multitask view. Um, it's, it's really clean and I like it like this. So I'm gonna keep it in dark for a second. Going into display, um, over here you do not have fractional scaling. So on laptops, you technically really need like uh, fractional scaling depending on the resolution and how the screen size is. And I would love to use this on my laptop, but without fractional scaling, because I know I have an offset 2000 times whatever um, uh, re resolution, without fractional scaling, it actually is unusable. Uh, we also have night light and a few other features um, that we have going along. I was really gonna excited to show you about the App Center with the flat pack and everything, but it just doesn't want to work. Uh, maybe if I could install, oh, I can't even get this to work. Let's see, come on. Let's see, Google. Let's go to another website. Maybe that might help. What I want to do is install, go into Flat Hub and install Flat Seal. And I can show you that a lot of these applications that you are seeing are actually Flat Hub. I mean, from Flatpak. So that website is totally not working. And I don't feel like I want to install Firefox because it shouldn't be needed. GNOME or Epiphany should be just fine. That's the default browser for Elementary OS 7 but I don't see it. Let's see, flat, seal, no, nothing. Won't even come up, oh, you know what? Flat, seal, go on flat hub, click on that. And since web pages don't like to load, is it that I don't have internet? Oops, no, I do because I had to install this from the internet. Oh, look, this is not in dark mode, but that's, again, another app. I'm talking more about system apps. Ping Google. Yeah, it pings. That's fine. Not sure. I did go to a website and I had to go into this website to test before. And I was able to load it, but now after I did all the system updates, it's kind of broken on me. So I could tell you that there are certain things that are flat pack, which is the calculator, the camera app, and a handful of their elementary OS apps. They are all flat pack. And if I was to go into shortcuts, they still do have my favorite favorite feature, which is picture-in-picture uh, -picture mode. So using window key F, I could just capture whatever screen I want. It'll bring it up to the bottom right and kind of like, oops, 
allows me to adjust this. Let me move this a little bit bigger and now I have my picture in picture mode on the bottom right of whatever application I have. I love this. I think more operating systems need to use that picture in picture mode because it is absolutely amazing. Especially when I have something in front, I can still see what's going on on the bottom. Overall, this operating system is a little bit too buggy for me to use as a daily driver or even to finish testing. I wasn't able to get some of the stuff that I wanted to test. Uh, it, it was just too buggy. Now, I did install this on my VM and it wasn't as buggy on my VM. I'm not exactly sure what changed between the three hours of the same ISO from that computer to this computer, but I could say it was not like this on my VM on my preliminary testing just to get their operating system installed or anything. It was perfectly fine. And I just replaced Linux Mint with this operating system thinking that this was going to be it. I was going to use this for a while and keep it as this desktop. But as it sits right now, I can't. I actually got to revert back to Mint. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. And also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.